Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Um, you know, we have a formula that we, we, on the court and off the court, that we believe we have to apply. Um, and we add to it all the time. The, the basketball formula uh, is kind of something I've felt like God gave me back when I first took up over this job because I felt like we were going to have to win with less and figure out a way to do that with smaller guys and that kind of stuff. And so I would say, you know, say I'll make it real simple, four things. Um, offensive rebound points. So if you take offensive rebound points, transition points, and three balls, three points. So if I beat you 12 threes to your eight, that's four points. Um, offensive rebounds, say 10 to six, that's four more. And then uh, transition points, I beat you by two, that's 10 points. And for, uh, I'm not kidding, I, I did, the, did the math. For, for 10 years, we beat our opponents by an average of 10 points per game in those areas. So they got to mm. beat us 10 to beat us. And then you had maybe the most important one out of all of them was hold your opponents under 40% on the field goal percentage. And so if we're able to do that, we that's win the four. Those are the four things. Those are the four. Okay. We win 100 percent of our games. If you win, if you get three of those, it's about 80, 85, 83 percent. That's it's been our winning percentage for the last 15 years. Um, and it seems real simple. Those are not hard, easy to do because you there's so many things that go into lower field goal percentage, beating your opponents, you know, on the offensive boards. Yeah. On my best season, 30. How many do you send? How many do you send to the glass? Uh, you know, I, I used to send four. Um, Bob McKillop, Curry's coach, uh, he sold me out on saying, I said four and a half. And I said, four and a half? And he goes, yeah, I put Curry at the elbow because when you get an offensive rebound and they pitch it out for a three, we call them daggers. And coaches are pulling their hair out. Not only do they get an offensive rebound, but now they hit a three on them. Mm. And so we sent four and a half. And people would say, but what, what about, you know, layups and stuff? I said, they're so worried about it. we we rebounded forty eight percent of our misses, and uh, went thirty five and two one year. Usually we're around forty to forty two on offensive rebound percentage. Um, that just means if we have a bad night shooting, we still win because yep. we're able to go to the offensive boards. We had twenty seven offensive rebound points uh, uh, just Saturday, um, and the twenty seven offensive rebound points and twenty five transition points. You're not going to beat that. Yep. Uh, and we didn't shoot the ball very good. But everybody thought we played awesome, you know. And I'm sitting there going, man, we got, we got to get better shoot. We got to hit the ball. It's some shots here. You know, at the same time, I'm, I'm thrilled because we're, we're doing those little things. Uh, I got five, five, ten guys that, that can understand the principle of going harder earlier, anticipating and getting great position. And I'm like, the same thought process. How, how are you going to get God's favor and, and anointing? Um, well, obviously, you're going to accept Christ in your, you know, because Christ means anointing. You know, he comes in your life. You have a, a measure of anointing and Holy Spirit in you, but you want to be baptized and have a whole full, just like he was, and, and, and more anointing and stuff. And we all have a gift in, in sports that are, you know, athletes and basketball players. So you need to use that gift. But I tell my, I was telling my guys, I was like, hey, you know, um, how do you want to increase? I said, you need to position yourself. Just like in a rebound on the yeah. backside, inside position, half the distance from where the ball's shot to where that ball's probably going to go. And you get to see it early. So then you got to learn to read it and go get it if it's not coming to you. Like that's the same thing as the Holy Spirit and, and favor and position yourself in a position where God's looking down and going, that's my boy. Like, man, God, just, I just, I just want to give him my favor right now because that's what favor is, a king, kingdom mentality. A king would give favor to somebody that was favorable in his sight. And that's what our king does and loves us uh, even more so than, you know, because because he knows our hearts and, and how, you know, how we really think if we're doing it. We're going to pray before the game just to get a win today. Afterwards, it's over. Whether win or lose, I'm going to go do what I want. You think, you think God's that dumb? <laughs> that's, that's right. That's not happening. Not, 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 not fooled. Hey, I want to dig a little bit deeper on one thing. So well, when I played, I always wanted to know routines of great players. You know, working out a little bit now, I want to know what, what great athletes or dudes that are older but still in shape, what they do. You mentioned, you know, your physical body and then that spiritual body and working out or feeding both. Uh, I would just love if, if you're open, what are some things or kind of just like a routine that you do daily to feed? Because I would, I would imagine um, 
that coaches struggle just like players do with feeding their physical body. We struggle with feeding our, us ourselves spiritually, especially during the season when you got this list of things that you have to do. What's your daily routine with that look like? Um, you know, it's sad is I wish I knew all this stuff back when I was 20, um, you know, in the sense of that, because I've always been willing to beat my body up and just, I mean, break a, I've been scarred all over, you know, and break, you know, playing hard, having fun with the basketball game. Um, same thing with my body. I would stay up, you know, three or four in the morning scouting opponents and trying to get that edge on beating somebody that I knew the only way we were going to beat them is if we knew every play they did and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and to the point of, you know, I, I probably had 15 or 20 kidney stones, um, dehydrating myself, let myself get stressed out, things that lead to that. And even though I know that, um, you know, that's that's been unhealthy for me. And now I've gotten way better on all that the last few years. And those have went down and all that, thank the Lord. But, uh, you know, I, I would say uh, one thing I heard the other day that uh, who you go to bed with is who you wake up with. Um, so, um, if I go to bed with, uh, spending time with Jesus and my spirit's been focusing on him instead of watching some either, you know, not, maybe not a bad movie, but just a movie. Yeah. Um, but it's not focused on him. I go to bed, my spirit doesn't sleep. So what is it focusing on throughout the night? Um, but if I went to bed and I was dwelling on him and spending some time with him, uh, first thing in the morning, like he's there waiting for me soon as I wake up and now I want to spend morning time with him, which I used to want to sleep in. And so uh, I, I usually spend about an hour to two hours every night and every morning um, in the word, uh, listening to a podcast, listening to a message, a video, going out and working, working out. Um, I've been working out about 630 in the morning. Uh, I'll either uh, have, have a podcast in or or listening to a message from some, or God, or just in worship, like listening to some of my favorite music. I'm a big music guy, and so um, there's a there's a thing called a hamagabin. I'm kind of probably gonna mess that up a little bit. It's a Hebrew word, and uh, uh, I to, can't remember the exact way to spell it, but you have to look it up. Okay. Um, and it's a time that the um, uh, the Hebrew um, they spend they set aside a time every day that they spend with God and no matter, they will not bend on that time. That time set aside for God. And we have what, 45 minutes on Sunday on average, you know, for, for God. And then we expect him to do miracles and see miracles in our lives. And, yeah. and it makes no sense. It's a great um, reminder. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Like we did a freedom fire events though. And I'm human just like anybody else. Um, I never fasted until I was 30 some years old. Uh, and it was because a friend had a uh, brain aneurysm and I, I felt like, you know, I, I was yelling at God out loud, like, why would you let this happen? This guy loves you. And I felt like God said fight. And I was like, at that point I drove a church bus. I was all American because of that, you know, but I never read my Bible. Um, I just went to church all the time and I was a good guy, yeah. but I didn't praise and worship because I can't sing kind of sitting near the back. I was cool. And, uh, you know, like I said, I let my wife, she would kind of wear the spiritual pants in the family. Um, she'd read about my kids and stuff like that. But I drove a church bus. I was a good guy. And so I was going to heaven. I'm, I'm confident. But at that moment, like when I heard him say fight, I knew exactly what he was talking about. And when a coach tells you to get in the game, what do you do? You don't look around being like, hey, why don't you put him in? <laughs> I'm kind of tired, coach. Like you're off the bench. So I heard him say, get in the game. I'm like, let's go. I'm in. And I knew at that moment, I watched my mom on her knees every night when I was a kid praying for my dad and her dad and her brother. And, you know, I knew she fasted. I knew she, she would read the Bible to me as I fell asleep. And I knew exactly what he was telling. Me. And I, I went for the first time into a level of fasting and praying and seeking and all that stuff in the Sunday school and time that I, I, I memorized the 91st Psalms and the 23rd Psalms for 10 bucks, all that stuff started coming out of me. And I knew my friend, I said, if I would fight, I knew my friend was going to make it. And he wasn't supposed to be able to make it. You know, they gave him no chance. And, and it got it a miracle, you know. 
And I tasted for two months something that I had never tasted at a level that I didn't realize existed. I went all in. And uh, two months later, I thought I was going to be the next head coach at that school because I was an All-American there. And we won a national championship. I've been there 10 years. And, you know, it didn't happen. Uh, I didn't get the job, um, you know, which is cool. I mean, later on, God had a different plan. But he gave me the Oklahoma Western job. Mm. And, you know, now I know he prepared me for 10 years in the, in the wilderness in the, in the, for what he's had for me the last 15 years, which is not even fair. Yeah. And, and so uh, how do you not uh, look at anything, you know, differently anymore? Because I, I sit there and say, like I said, um, what do I do in the mornings? What's a regular day for me? It's two hours, two hours, some physical something in there. And then try to make sure my wife likes to go to bed early. So I spend as much time with her until she's ready to go to bed. And then I go spend time with God. Um, with the Free to Fire event, um, I've learned that there's a spiritual battle going on all the time we can't see. And you got to win that spiritual battle before the physical battle shows up. You can't wait till the physical battle and then start praying. <laughs> it's probably too late right. uh, at times for you to, to, to understand the, the war and that's going on. And, and, and I'm not talking about basketball games here, but sure. I would go up to the event place in the field, uh, the amphitheater, every night. And, and I started doing it just at first because I thought, well, I'll go up here and walk around pray a little bit over this place. Well, then went up there like nine o'clock. God showed up. I'm by myself. And I'm like, I can't leave. I'm there until like two in the morning. Like, it's so wow. And it's just worshiping. I'm doing my own concert by myself. Every night I go up there. Like, some nights I'm like, oh, man, it's, it's kind of cold and kind of tired tonight. And I here I tell my guys this is one of our principles. Don't go by feelings. If you don't feel like getting back on defense, get back on defense. If you don't feel like going to the boards, go to the boards. Because the feelings will get you beat every time. And so whenever I don't feel like something, I, I know I better get on my man, uh, you know, grown man thing and say, okay, it's time to, to focus and go. And so I've learned like, man, by doing that time with him, it's not doing time. It's yeah. privileged opportunity that he shows up. And like, I may have to be there two hours just chilling, waiting, but like, it's hard to explain all that, you know? No, it's it's great. That's great. And I, I, I mean, I like, I, I do one thing I've, I've, I mean, doing this for a few months now, it's amazing just the directions that you get to go. You know, it's, this isn't, it's not a basketball podcast, <laughs> you know, awesome. it's not, it's Shimodi podcast, just a matter of doing it, but it's all about uh, not what we do, but how we do what we do. And, and for you, yeah, I've always been a fan of yours. And wanting to know more about you, just this connection that you have, I think, is one that we can all aspire to. And and but and but I shouldn't be shocked right now if I if I the the moments when I tell my players this, the moments when I just feel like things are off or life's not lining up the way that I feel like it should, or I'm not in the right mindset, I have to immediately go back to my walk. And when my walk is off, when I'm not spending that time, like, again, I'm amazed at 39. I'm still surprised that, that I don't recognize that disconnect quicker. But then and in those moments where, like, I look back, I'm like, you know, that was a time of, of joy and a time of peace and a time of, of, of clarity. Well, I was in the word daily. I was listening and watching the right things and having, there's just no, like, why am I, why am I still surprised? And so I really, I do appreciate you telling me, I mean, the two hours, two hours, but then like, I, uh, but even the more detail you went to, it's, it also has to do with like listening to, so I listen to music when I work, when I work out, not always worship and it's not always a sermon, but like what that could be a time where, that's 30 to 45 minutes that I could steal back and not just be working out, but also uh, uh, growing my relationship with God. And so, I, man, I appreciate you being so open and, and authentic with sharing those things. So that, that's powerful. I'll tell you what, if you can use me, um, I'm not articulate, don't claim to be. Um, small town boy from Prior Creek. 
didn't have an ACT score. Nobody ever come from my family to go to college. Uh, you name it. You know, 10 years as an assistant, most people would have said at the time, you know, not successful and not making much money. Um, and those are the best times of my life. I mean, it's not about the money. It's not about the fame. Like, I'll go back and coach seventh grade girls again tomorrow, which is my first job. I actually ran into three of those girls. Uh, I was over at the Toby Mac concert um, just last week, and three of those girls were there. And that first seventh grade team, we won one game. Nice. But they love the Lord, and I mean, we got better, and they were awesome, you know, uh, at 7 in the morning or 6.30 in the morning. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's so much bigger. Um, and, and I know it's hard to explain that uh, to, to kids, and they want to they be successful right now, you know, and, and you have kids. We're a different program. We, we don't do a lot of transfers. We have a few. But, you know, we bring a lot of high school kids in, and, and I've had kids that, you know, right now I start probably – Three kids that started off in, in our, you want to call JV or, or uh, call G League team yeah. uh, and stuff. And so you're growing them, you know, through, grow them. through a program. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.